unions making a comeback in America, maybe at the NCAA. I don't know. It's uh, college football. Uh, the the uh, National Labor Relations Board has a proved, uh, approved a petition from a group of Northwestern University football players who said that they wanted to form a union, that they're actually employers of Northwest, or employees, rather, of Northwestern University. Uh, the university controls the hours that they work. It's it's the hours of a full-time job. They control the conditions and the terms and the place. And they be, basically meet all the definitions of an employee. Now, so far, they're not asking for money. In fact, we don't know what they might be asking for. In fact, so far, they haven't formed a union. But they have the right to begin the process, which can be an arduous process. And then if they get one, there's speculation that perhaps they'll be looking for things like health care. Who knows? But uh, James Shirk uh, is with us. He is a senior policy analyst in labor economics at the Heritage Foundation, heritage.org. And I'm curious. Hey, James, welcome to the program. Thank you. I'm curious your take on this other than, you know, well, I don't want to put words in your mouth. What's your take on it? Well, I I think the the notion of unionizing college sports is pretty absurd. Uh, I think it would devastate uh, the sports as we've known it, and it would just be an absolute mess. But uh, college the, sports the are a big hand, business. I mean, you've got, you've got college, you know, back 40 years ago, you had college uh, uh, coaches who were making thirty-five dollars and $40,000 a year. Now you've got coaches who are making millions. You know, I, I do agree. The NCAA ought not be allowed to uh, tell colleges if they can't uh, pay their players. These uh, players bring in millions for their schools, and if they want to sign licensure deals you know, with outside companies or if a school is willing to uh, pay them a salary to uh, play at their team, they ought not be allowed to forbid that. I, I agree that it's, it's pretty absurd that they say that the, these athletes who bring in millions, tens of millions in, in some cases, uh, for their schools can't get compensated. I, I just don't think that uh, you know, unionizing college sports would just make a, a mess of things. So let me get this straight. You agree that they're employees? I agree that uh, if they want to license their image, I agree that if they want to uh, go, you know, if a, a college is willing to pay them, the college ought to be allowed to pay them. Right. So you agree that they're employees, but you don't think employees should have the right to unionize? Well, I think that uh, if you take a look at uh, the NLRB jurisdiction, they only cover uh, private sector workers. So anyone in a state school uh, wouldn't qualify. And anyone under this interpretation who doesn't get a scholarship also doesn't qualify. I, I think uh, unionizing you know, what would that be, a third or so of the, the players in college sports? Well, the, uh, the other two-thirds would not be. Uh, on top of which, uh, you'd... you'd isn't, to, wait a minute, isn't Northwestern a state school? Oh, it's not. It's a private yeah. school. No, no, it's a, uh, they would have no jurisdiction if this were a, a state school. I see. So Michigan State... So Northwestern can do it, but MSU can't. Exactly. Uh, you know, my, uh, I, I'm a Michigan fan, and uh, you know, it, it was a heartbreaking loss. But you know, that said, they would not be eligible. Well, let's change the NLRB rules, then. Well, that would take an act of, uh, of Congress. You know, the, the board really has no uh, jurisdiction there. And I think even beyond that, the notion, I mean, are you going to have, do you want a third of the teams you know, going on strike before uh, March Madness starts? Are you going to have you know, college students? If that's what it takes for them to get treated fairly. Yeah, I think there's another road to this. Uh, there's an antitrust lawsuit uh, being waged against the NCAA right now as we speak. And we'll see how it shakes out. But uh, I think a, a pretty good uh, reading under antitrust law would be that they are not allowed to tell the colleges they can't compensate the workers. Well, big league football has an exemption from, uh, the NFL has an exemption from antitrust, do they not? Uh, NFL does. NCAA does not. Right. And so, so there's, there's no carve out for them. I, I think the, the way to deal with this is you know, just allow this you know, lawsuit to proceed. Right. And uh, I mean, we'll, we'll see what happens. But I think they've got a strong case that it's, it's acting like a monopoly. And you'll get rid of that prohibition on compensating the workers. And I, I think a lot of the grievances that are being raised are, are legitimate grievances and uh, would be solved when that happens. I, I just don't think a union is the best answer uh, for these players. Just because, in general, you don't like unions? Because unions often create uh, more problems. Uh, I mean, you, you take a look at what happened to uh, Major League Baseball when you had the, uh, the strike in the mid-'90s. Mm-hmm. Or uh, NFL, the, the way the player strikes have uh, driven away a lot of uh, the audience from the sports. Uh, that, I don't think so. And those player strikes have done a lot for the players. I mean, those players used to be badly abused. Well, I would... They're doing uh, much better now. If you take a look at the you know, the overall audience and the attendance of the game, to, of the like, uh, for the, the overall game, I... I the I NFL think is doing great. Come on. And, and not only that, the NFL is, I mean, you know, talk about socialism. 
this is the most socialist institution in the United States. Who who gets first uh, draft pick every year? Uh, the the team. Look, I, I mean, look, I, I don't think uh, you ought to have an antitrust exemption for uh, for NFL. And I, I think the notion. I agree with you on that. Nonprofit is. Uh, it's frankly quite absurd, and, and taxpayer dollars certainly should not be subsidizing the construction of uh, of these stadiums. I mean, they're they're a profitable industry, and they ought not be coming at yeah. the end of. Why the, should George the Bush make make fourteen million bucks on a seven hundred thousand dollar investment just by basically hustling a city? I mean, this is you've got uh, owners. All, well, here, here's another thing that, that that really blows my mind. I you know I think the Packers are the only reasonable model in the entire country where you've got basically the community owning the team it was originally the meat packers union and but but every place else in the country it's like you got to find a billionaire to own a team this makes no sense to me no i, I mean it's what well, what i find again you, you look at minnesota where you've got the, uh, the the teams coming to the legislature and saying we want a new stadium you know give us more tax dollars i mean that's you know these are, are quite profitable teams and if they're right. if they're not profitable why should the taxpayers be the one you know, having to cough up more in terms of their property taxes or their sales tax to fund this I mean, it's, it's, it's a kind of cronyism that uh, really ought not... So let's do away with the antitrust exemption for the NFL, and let's change the rules so that, so that uh, local communities can buy the teams that are in their communities. And, and that way you're not going to have, you know, billionaires playing towns off. Uh, you know, hey, you know, Brooklyn, if you won't give me a new stadium, I'm going to go to Los Angeles. If by local communities you mean individuals and not the the city government, yeah, I, I don't think having that's a, what I'm talking uh, about. You know, yeah, you, you've got go people all over Green Bay who owns, you know, and Absolutely. they've been passing the stock down in their family for four generations. No, by all means, go for it. I, I think that's a, a great model. I, I, I have uh, friends who uh, whose family own uh, you know, Packer stock, and they're they're never going to sell that, and they're very proud of it. And uh, I think you know, that's a much better model. Uh, than the taxpayers being told, why don't you cough up money in order to uh, to fund these, uh, in many cases, quite profitable franchises? Right. So, <clears throat> so back to the back to Northwestern University. In essence, your argument is these guys are employees. They should they do have legitimate grievances that should be addressed, just not via the form of a union. Well, I, I wouldn't. I know. I, I, right Excuse now, me. I'm not sure if you can you know, qualify the the scholarship as being an employee. I wouldn't. Quite well, it's a thing of value. Far, but I, I think the school ought to be allowed to. You know, if if you can recruit someone, and you, you say you offer them fifty thousand, hundred thousand a year to you know uh, play on your college basketball team because they're a good player, by all means, the workers, you know, the players, however you want to uh, describe it, they ought to be allowed to take that money. Right, and and, the, and, the, and they're facing. I mean, they're you know they're, they're facing career-ending injuries every day. No, it, exactly. And for, you know, what, 98, 99... But why shouldn't they be able to be represented by a democratic institution? I mean, unions are the last democratic institution in the workplace in America. Why shouldn't they be able to have a democracy that they're part of? I mean, if if they want to have a a players' association, but the the notion of going on strike to say, get you know, let's have earlier uh, class, or sorry, later class start uh, times, or a a, uh, better dorms... But the employers can do that. The employers can play any kind of games they want. They they can fire people. They can they could they could change time. I mean, they typically wouldn't because it wouldn't be in their best interest. But basically, the employers have all the power. Why are you opposed to the workers having power? The power I propose other than that it might have. inconvenience you as a fan. No, the the, the, power, uh, the power that they ought to have is get rid of this cartel. I mean, it's a get rid of the NCAA's ability to you know tell the workers that they can't. Uh, or the players, or again, however you want to describe it. Who's initiated the antitrust uh, action? Legal action. That I don't know. The lawsuit. I'd have to take a look at that.